welcome guys uh, now we are going to learn about the most busiest object of python that is a list um in reality lists are python's most flexible ordered collection object type flexible ordered collection object type the amazing thing about the list is lists can contain any sort of the object any sort of object literally any means any from numbers strings and even other lists tuples etc unlike uh, strings lists are mutable what does mutable mean mutable means the object can be changed in place by assignment to offsets and slices so list method calls deletion statements and more so we will see this practically while coding in lists in action so now we will discuss uh, some of the brilliant qualities of uh, list object the first one is it is an ordered collection of arbitrary objects arbitrary objects means basically any object which can be included any object arbitrarily we can include any type of object in list any type of object in list two it can be accessed by offset indexing so we know this offset indexing what does it mean and all we have discussed in previous uh, video and uh, the third one is variable length it is variable length uh, it can be changed because it it's uh, uh, it is immu it is mutable so that uh, we can change it any time while ago we can change so it's a variable in length it is heterogeneous and arbitrarily arbitrarily nestable so arbitrarily nestable what makes this object stand out and most sought out in python objects and fourth one is it is a mutable sequence that we have discussed earlier and what does it mean and fifth one is a list is nothing but arrays of object uh, references arrays of object it is an array of object uh, references so uh, inherently a list consists of uh, list itself is an object inherently a list consists of a uh, plenty of objects objects in it so that's why what do we call it we call it as a array of object uh, references so let us uh, have a look on some of the most used expressions with uh, list objects the first one l is equals to so this is uh, l is equals to square brackets empty square brackets uh, uh, this list object the literal expression required is square brackets with which are bare minimum requirement uh, to create an empty list object object so now we will look into other uh, uh, literals or expressions so when you say l is equals to again open square bracket and uh, one comma two two objects inside it both are int objects and close the square bracket then it is a two item object with indexes 0 and 1 so basically this is another list object another list object you are create you generated you, you have generated and uh, the third one is nested sublists so inside a list you have a string and then you have two 
lists in it so that's why it's called nested sublists and the fourth one is a list of it's a list method uh, so here a list as a function we are using it as a function we are calling it because you see that expression that open and close parenthesis it, this is used to call something so list as a function we are using so it is a list of iterables iterable we will discuss what is iterable in future but as of now iterable uh, means uh, sequentially we can take one item from a sequence so here so hurry hurry is a, an iterable that's a string object which is a terrible so we'll get it a list out of it and list of generator we have discussed about the generator function a range is a generator function so we use a list to generate this and then index l of i when you do l of an index position then what you get is a index of that uh, uh, and then uh, index of index this is called l of i of j this is how we read index of index this is how we interpret it and this is slice l of i through j then length of l so these are uh, some of the uh, expressions and then their interpretations so now what we will do is we will do some coding and we will understand better then we will move on to the lists in action so that's what uh, our motto is in this session so list basics so here you know an expression open and square bracket open and close square square bracket uh, generates a list so this is what and if you check the type of this you got you will get a list and we are just assigning an empty list to the uh, reference variable or reference name that is L and then we will write a list with four items so each will have an index from 0 to 3 so that's why I have used the same one let's execute a four item list this is what we got it's a list object then after that uh, nested sublists for that uh, I used ABC one string and then another list with uh, some arbitrary uh, alphabets combination together so this is our nested sublist basically all these uh, operations will prove you the properties of a list because when properties of list we have discussed that uh, uh, it is where it, it is variable in length and it's it heterogeneous and it it is arbitrarily nestable and it's mutable so all these properties uh, we are actually proving it uh, through code here okay so then uh, the one more thing we have discussed is we can uh, make a list from iterable hurry is our iterable let's let's execute this and we'll see what we get so what we got here is this h a r e that's what it stepped into it and we got the characters of that uh, string as a list and then list of successive integers or we can simply call it as a generator function a range is a generator function so this is a range is a generator but who makes this generator functions if you remember when you use yield in spite of return while making a function it makes this type of uh, generator function so generator function doesn't give a sing, uh, values directly so you have to step into that function and 
a make a list or you have to step into that function using list or using a loop for loop or using list comprehension or some other way okay so here the, those are called generators function so here a range is that generator function and we want to generate uh, uh, successive integers from minus 5 to 5 but normally so if I just use it a range of minus 5 to 5 we don't get anything it makes a function so to step into that we use a list so finally we got a list of uh, minus 5 minus 5 to 4 a list because this is not included the last one and then indexing indexing is similar to the strings l of 1 1 is index position what is there in 1 it is minus 4 fantastic and then slicing slicing is a getting a piece of uh, piece of uh, getting a piece from a pizza so here our pizza is this minus 5 to 4 from out of which i want a last portion okay from 4 to 9 4 to 9 means 0 1 2 3 indexing index positions i am talking about 0 1 2 3 4 from here 5 6 7 8 9 till here let's see we got we got exactly the same so minus 1 2 3 so now length how do you calculate uh, how do you get the length of the list how many uh, objects inside it because everything is object in it everything is an object in it that's what we have said in our theoretical class in theoretical session that a list is nothing but arrays of object references all these objects are referenced to a common variable known as l see here this is l okay fine so now it's a length of l then it's the total length is 10 it has a 10 characters from 0 to 9 obviously obviously it is 10 then so these are some of the uh, basics of uh, list and next we will go into the lists in action and uh, we will uh, uh, move we will uh, see complete operations that we can do with the lists and uh, we will practically code it and then we will move on to the another session so here we move on to the list in action basically enough of discussing about the qualities of the list or class or object again i'm using the same reference now we will directly enter into the action sequences of list now the following are the maximum operations that we can do with the list so here The, we'll begin with uh, basic operations. Basic operations are done using inbuilt length function. It is length function. It is similar to the string only. And again, concatenation uh, using plus operator. Again, repetition using a asterisk operator. So again, uh, I will just discuss uh, about the same topic that is uh, polymorphism. You can use plus for concatenation of uh, string object, list object, and multiple and addition for the int object. That's called a polymorphism. That's how it is uh, effective. The Python is effective. Okay, and uh, the second one. Uh, we are looking to use indexing and slicing. So and now we are entering into the most useful and most uh, thoughtful operations on lists. That is indexing and slicing. So indexing we follow here is the offset indexing. So we have discussed about what is offsetting offset indexing, which actually means the index of your first character in your list is zero, not one. Whether it may be string or list. Or tuple it, it, it remains same your first character or first object 
is zero, not one. So indexing L of I fetches components at offsets and slicing L of I through J extracts a contiguous section of the sequence. And the one more most useful uh, uh, operation in list we do is uh, writing a matrix. Writing matrices uh, for uh, in uh, for mathematical operations in data science. So basically, you can uh, write. You can use three lists, three sublists in a list, so that you can make an uh, uh, matrix. For this matrix, example, with one index, you can get an entire row. So that's how powerful it is. And with two, you get an item within uh, that row. Okay. So now, the next thing we will discuss is the list iteration. List iteration, list iteration and comprehensions mostly used operations to drastically reduce the code size. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have list iteration and comprehensions, uh, we might have to use. Uh, we must have to use uh, uh, for loop. It 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 will take a lot of code uh, to write the same list comprehension. Now, more generally, list, lists respond to all the sequence operations we used on uh, strings including iteration tools. Okay. And uh, so now, typecasting. Typecasting is as similar to typecasting in other objects also. So typecasting is converting or forcing to use any iterable object as a list. So this is very important. This is the difference. Until unless it is a literable, iterable object, you cannot make a list. What is iterable object? I have already discussed. Okay. And then uh, the final, the most important, the most personal and native actions or behaviors of list object is uh, called list type specific methods. So the following are the list type specific methods. One is append. It's very widely used, very widely used. Append adds items at the end. Sort. It sorts list of items, whatever is there inside that list. Extend. It's to, uh, it's a grow, it's a method of growing to increase the size of the list because it's mutable it is mutable it can be changed in place and insert it's uh, and index is method searching insert is also method growing to insert some an insert a character or an object in a certain index position and then count is to count a certain object inside it and reverse the whole list pop is just remove it and show it remove completely remove it and don't need to show it and reverse we have discussed and then clear to completely clear the list copy copy the list and these are some of the examples in that so now what we will do is uh, we will actually get hands on in jupyter notebook So now lists in action. What we'll discuss is complete lists in action. Okay. So we'll begin with a basic operations. So let's take an example. So this example is based on the list of uh, based on the list of students that have been enrolled for intuitive python for you course okay this is the course that i have i have made so I'll, i i want student list obviously if i want to do some operations using python i need to put all the students in a specific list so that i can do some operations on it so student list the students are these are the uh, names of different uh, students and each object each each one is a object 
in turn so it is uh, charan is a string object rama is a string object hari krishna these are all uh, string objects now now we'll begin some basic operations the first one batch strength so what do we call it so how many numbers are there in our batch that's what i want to know for that i will use a length of the list so let's check so only nine members have joined my course fantastic let's see whether will it increase or not so now what happened these are the added students oh so by now nine members have joined but uh, fortunately bhavani jagan mohan and keshava these are the uh, three more students that have enrolled for this course now i just want to add them into the list so i have two options either concatenation or there is one more option but now initially i'll start with the concatenation because i mean basic operations so present student list i want okay so added students bhavani jagan mohan list and then uh, the whole student list let's concatenate and print it let's see see now we got we these uh, bhavani and jagan mohan and keshava got added at the beginning of this list because that's what our initial list so both the lists have been concatenated this is called uh, this way of using plus expression operator or the matic operator for different uh, purposes is known as a polymorphism okay so now we will do a repetition operation using this so nil and the list so we got four nils that's nice you can do it the same okay now uh, i just converted this is uh, converted this uh, whatever list we have into the string and then uh, another 44 string and this is how uh, it will be converted this is a string type casting so uh, you have to be careful that uh, you can convert a list into the string in that case it is no more a list it will be just considered as a characters uh, just characters inside it it will be a list it will be a string it won't be a list anymore so now we will look into the indexing and slicing so indexing is as similar as uh, string object uh, indexing uh, we have a present student list so out of which i want to know in present student list uh, who is there in position index position 2 as obvious is offset indexing so we'll check so that guy is Kashwa. Let's go up and let's check once. Zero, one, two. This guy is Kashwa. Nice, nice, nice. So now from negative indexing, we'll see minus two. Who is there in minus two? Count from the reverse, from the last. Minus one is Durga, minus two is Kali. Fantastic reverse indexing is also working brilliant brilliant so now uh, we will do the slicing slicing fetches the sections of uh, this so now i want a set of uh, students uh, who has a positions index positions from 1 to 7 so present student list of 1 through 7 so this is how we read this uh, slicing Let's check. Obviously, Jagan Mohan is in first position, and then these are all uh, uh, other students we have. Now, indexing and slicing is also done. Out of which, in indexing and slicing, we will see the most important topic. You should understand very well. That's why I have included in it. It is mutable. Mutable. So mutability mutable or also known as in place ascendant let's see let's see how it works okay uh, what we'll do is so this month we got uh, one more student uh, uh, enrolled into the course so now i want to add i want to add this new student at index one that's what my motto so how can i add for that what i have to do is again 
present student list of of one of one is nothing but index position so at this position i want to add this student this is a string object so i just want to add let's see so operation is done let's check whether this guy got added or not so bhavani after bhavani who is there in uh, say first position zero bhavani is in zero and and first position we have mahadeva so this is what we call in place assignment this is how we can do in place assignments then uh in we also have a matrix for example for example we will take m matrix in m matrix uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 is one list and another list is 4 comma 5 comma 6 and another list is 7 comma 8 comma 9 so now we'll print it this is a nestable list uh, and now if you want to fetch the first row first row okay first position row so this is zero this is one this is two so m of 1 will get 4 comma 5 comma 6 and if you if i want to fetch an item from that row m of 1 comma 1 so i got 5 so this is a this is in first position that's how the matrix is used uh, uh, in uh, data science next the third operation that we do in lists is list iteration and comprehensions uh the basic uh, exact meaning and the practical understanding of iteration uh, will be done in module 3 uh, but by now for now uh, we will uh, discuss about the list comprehension and how this liter list iteration uh, is helpful in list comprehension okay so uh let's take uh, charan as a string in present and student list this is our present student list so it is uh, if you remember in is in in is membership operator in is membership operator so i'm just checking whether charan is in the name charan is in present the name charan is in present student list or not let's check yes it is there that's the true of true uh, answer is uh, true and the object is boolean object now i just want to uh print out all the names uh in my present student list i just want to check who all students are there uh in my batch in my batch so far so for that i'll use for loop okay for that i'll use for loop and i'll check so so bhavani mahadeva keshava charan rama krishna and all these all guys actually have uh, are in my batch in my student batch now the same code it's a two statements we have one is uh, for loop uh, statement and second one is print statement so we have two statements the same thing can be written in single statement and we'll get the same we'll get the same result let's check so i just called it as a list comp so this is names names is our target variable and then for loop and then names iterable iterable variable and in is membership operator and present student list this is our iterable item or iterable list so i i targeted this name it's a target variable and then i used a as usual for loop 
for loop here. So now I just want to print this list comprehension. Now I don't need to define it as a list. I directly got, I will get it as a list. You see, now I got the same output with a single line, with a single statement, with a single statement. Just for your understanding, whatever it's called the name. So this uh, list comprehension goes like this. You will have a target variable here. And after that, you will have a for loop statement. And then again, here we will have that iterable variable. And it should be same as this target variable. What, whatever uh, variable you are targeting, so the same thing should be should uh, give here. And then we have uh, another if you go a little deeper, we will have a conditional list comprehension. For conditional li list comprehension, what we will do is we will have everything remains intact, but we will add if loop in addition to that. So we want a list of students with D, with which starts with D. Okay. Now again, target variable and then for loop goes for names in present student list. Then after that, our if condition statement comes into the picture. So if, if the target variable, obviously the target variable is this. Now nah, this is a string object because in list what we have is a string object. So now whatever string object methods are there we can use so string object has a plenty of methods out of which starts with d starts with is one method so that's why we have directly attached that method it's called attribute uh, reference we directly attach that starts with method to the name and then we gave we want uh, a student names with uh, which start which starts with d so then we'll close the list comprehension bracket and we'll see. So Divya, Dakshayani and Durga. So these are uh, the students uh, whose names actually uh, start with uh, D. So this is how we use. It's very much useful. And similarly, we can use uh, else in the list comprehension also. Now typecasting, typecasting is a sim it is similar to this. Uh, so here, uh, uh, for example, uh, spell a student name. I ju we just want to spell the student name means uh, what all uh, alphabets are there in that uh, student name. So for that, what I did, uh, I want so out of uh, in above uh, example, we have. Uh, uh, made a list of uh, students whose name whose names actually start with uh, D. So out of which I want a name which is in the first position. So this is that the uh, first index position, offset index position. So now I just want to step into that name and uh, get all alphabets. Okay. So this is what alphabet it consists of and all are inside. These are all D, A, K. These are string objects in it. Okay. So similarly, we can uh, step, uh, we can type cast uh, tuple also. So basically one comma three comma five is a tuple because you can see that expression uh, starts with uh, open parenthesis and uh, closes with the closed uh, parenthesis. So, but when you use a list, and call it using parenthesis, uh, it will it work as a function and it will convert that uh, tuple into list. But the condition is uh, whatever uh, function, whatever object you want to typecast, that should be a iterable, that should be iterable object. Okay. So now list type specific methods. 
now we are entering into the most exciting and most useful uh, topic in list in action after list comprehension that is list type specific methods so here we'll begin with append an append method of an append method it it will append object to the end of the list see end of the list for example we have added a mahadeva initially at uh, offset index position 1 but here we'll just append Ma madhava we'll just append madhava and we'll see where will it be appended so it, it it got appended at the last position okay that's how uh, it works and then uh, we'll use sort method sort sort the list in ascending order and return none so everything got sorted out if you see the top one is this and uh, Bhavani, Mahadeva, Keshava, Charan, Rama, Hari, Krishna, Shiva, Divya, Dakshani, Kali. So it is not actually in ascending order, in a proper ascending order. But here if you see, here if you see, Bhavani, Charan, Dakshani, Divya, Durga, Hari. So it's in proper ascending order. That's the benefit of sort method. Okay, students got... Uh, 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 students names got uh, sorted out uh, based on their uh, ascending order or alphabets and the next one is extended extend method so this is a growing method it's called a growing method extend a list by appending elements from the iterable if you if you uh, provide an iterable inside this uh, call uh, parenthesis this will append these uh, objects into the existing li list so i have a present student list and i just want to extend this list uh, with the new addition of students that is madhushodana and vishnu okay so now we will see the list okay here it is madhusho madhusodana and then vishnu so these are the new students uh, that those are uh, those are got added up to our uh, uh, session to our class now we'll use insert method insert object before index so what we have to do is so this is uh, 0 index position and this is a name of the student which we want to uh, insert in our list let's see I want this at position 0 let's see Govinda Govinda it is, here it is okay so if you just want to insert in a certain offset position offset index position you use this insert method and uh, we have index uh, it's similar uh, to the index uh, method in uh, string object uh, so there also you'll get the uh, object uh, you get the object uh, object which belongs to that index position so here also sorry 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 we'll get the index of the character or object that you have mentioned in the call option or call parenthesis okay fine so now it returns the first index value that's very important first index value if you have two govindas or three govindas it will uh, it will gives the first index value only so index of so this is my govinda a string object inside the list i want the index offset index position of this what's the index position let's check it's zero if you see here it is zero okay it's here it is govinda zero one two three so it's zero we got the zero next uh, then count how many govindas how many govindas students how many govindas are there in our list in our batch let's check how many govindas are there 
do we have a two or three Govindas or only one? We have only one Govinda. Next is a reverse. It will reverse in place. We won't see that. It will reverse it. Then that's how. And then what we have is remove remove first occurrence of value. When you use remove, it will remove it from that list. So I just want to remove Govinda because that student uh, got completed this course early early so that's the reason i just want to remove uh, from the list uh, so i will remove this guy and then i'll check uh, what's the output so govinda has got uh, removed and uh, we are left with the remaining students then uh, what we have is clear clear so uh, we are almost uh, coming uh, to the end of this course uh, so that's the reason i just want to finish uh, once the course is finished i have to uh, clear that batch uh, from uh, uh, list so that's the reason i just want to remove all the names from the list so i will execute this and we'll see now present student list i'll see what's the condition how many students are left uh, just a minute so here it is it is empty you can see this present student list is completely empty now uh, if you use copy return a shallow copy of the list if you use uh, copy it will uh, copy the list of uh, students this is student list that was initial uh, student list and it just copied uh, that and actually we can uh, store it in uh, uh, separate uh, variable uh, and we can use it for the some other purpose so with this uh, we are coming to an end of uh, theoretical and then uh, practical part of uh, list object so i hope you enjoyed it you just keep uh, watching and uh, more videos and there are a lot of uh, exciting stuff ahead and uh, keep liking it, keep subscribing it, keep watching it and uh, keep uh, spreading a word about it so that uh, more people can uh, learn Python intuitively so that they can uh, have a wonderful career ahead. Thanks and uh, thanks again.